you know, you, you got to trust evaluations. When I say recruiting is one thing, evaluating is another. You got to trust it, and you make mistakes. We're not. I'm not sitting there saying we're gurus. We make mistakes all the time, but also trust our instincts and our coaches' instincts about guys before they get seen. Because some guys aren't seen. He didn't have an opportunity. We wanted to get that get that offer out there early and to him, and uh, hopefully he remembered the first one he got. Because in the end, he had a bunch of them. Hey, this is the first year in a while. Florida State doesn't sign anyone locally. Do you see, I know you can't talk about names, but do you see it getting better in the next few years? Hopefully. I mean, we're trying. We're recruiting in here, inside out, just like we always do. I mean, we're going. We're hitting every one of these schools. Every time we can be at one of these local schools, we're trying to do it, and we're trying to get the, and every local young man we can get. So, you know, it's, it's not going to be up to us. We're going to recruit the heck out of them. It's going to be, I guess, probably more up to them. Do you see and, talent coming up? I do. I think there's some very good talent. There's always been good talent in Tallahassee. I mean, the other day up there, somebody said Auburn, SC, Tennessee, and somebody else was plane landed out there the other day. So <laughs> there was a bunch of them in here. So they're in here for a reason. Smaller class next year, Coach? What probably so. Hopefully so. I mean, we won't have as many seniors and uh, didn't want down as many scholarships, but we'll see. I mean, you know, you never know and how that goes, but and that's that's a little bit far ahead. You we talk, got an idea. You talked about the character. When kids commit early, they give up some of that sign based flash. You know, does that show something when a kid willing to commit early? That, you know, they... Well, they do, but let me ask this what are they gain? Peace of mind, for one thing, developing character and getting teammates, and two, I bet 90% of them's academics get better. Because you know why? They're not receiving a 1,000 phone calls all through spring, all through summer, all through fall. They're not rivals and .com and Scout and ESPN ain't calling them every day because they already recruit. Like you call them once every three weeks because there's no news. Don't get no websites. Don't get no hits. You know what I'm saying? So now, they, and they're not going on visits. Now all the coaches call them all week. Taking each, If five coaches call a night, how much studying are they doing? See, I'm, I'm a bigger – they're trying to push recruiting back. I need to push – I think you ought to push it up because it's better for the kids. If they know where they want to go and do that, you'll have, you'll have more kids qualify because they can spend more time on it. And they can concentrate on what they're going to do. And they're not running all over the country. And then what happens at the end? The pressure builds, right? They don't know what they're doing. They're going in a hole for two or three weeks. You think they're thinking about school? They ain't thinking about school. And the people who think you're by pushing it back makes it better, I think it makes it worse. I think you're hurting the kid. Jim, but the, uh, on that vein, when they talk about having an earlier signing day or two signing periods, hasn't the practice of, of getting kids enrolled early, doesn't the first day of the spring semester kind of become a de facto? Yeah, but what, what about the kid who can't enroll early? But the ones who can. It, well, it gets them, but you're not signing. And, what it, and, and economically, it saves the school. That's five trips. He doesn't have to fly all over and go back and talk to the kid again that he has to go to. It helps save the school money. You see more of that happening. What's that? So the kids are rolling early. Yeah, I think, and if they're ready for it, I think you know it's nothing wrong with it. And I don't, I'm not think there's anything. If you stay in high school, I think it's the greatest time. If I could go back, I'd be a freshman again in high school, not college. I'd be a freshman in high school again. I go back in a heartbeat, in two seconds. I could just know what I know now. <laughs> but even if I didn't know what I know now, still fun. <laughs> but I think the early signing period was. I think economically for the schools, it saves money. And for people. And I think now they always argue, what's well, coach? I think do it in the middle of December when you do the uh, 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 junior college signing day. Because most of your coaching changes are done by then. And if there's a threat of one, you know about it. Well, don't sign. Because they always say, well, if you sign early, then the coaches change. If you by the middle of December, all, most coaching changes are done. If you do it right there in the middle of December. And here's the other thing. What I hate about recruiting the last two weeks, all right, what are we doing all season? Ball, right? So there's not a lot of time to browbeat a kid get into the craziness of, of recruiting. The last two weeks of recruiting are a zoo. Because it's 99% misinformation compared to information. Everybody knows where they're going. They know where they're going. So everybody spends two weeks trying to convince the kid and screw everything up in his world and put all the pressure on it, even the ones that are committed. You can't do it if you do it in December. You know why? Because everybody's playing ball. And they got a coach. They ain't got time to go do it. For a month and a half, we ain't got nothing to do as coaches. So what we do is spend all of our time on recruiting. It's better for the kid. Because recruiting is getting ridiculous on some of that stuff. Jimbo, you went a long way to find an offensive lineman walking in North Dakota. I, I suspect that if you go to places like that to get a kid, there's got to be something a little special. If you go far off, he, he, he needs to be a guy that can make a difference. I've always believed that. And uh, we think he can. He can provide an immediate need and one of our inside positions, hopefully. And he's got to win the job and do what he can do. We think he's a very talented young man. Jacob's a very talented young man, very strong young man. Flexible, great lower body flexibility. Uh, 
I think can be a great addition to us quickly, hopefully. But, uh, talk two guys real quick. Tank, uh, the defensive end, and then weigh some. Tank's the athletic than any end I've ever been around. Tank, Tank's in a different, I mean, athletically, you're talking about a guy that's six foot four, five, 260, I mean, 260, 265, that runs four, five or under, that can play outside backer and stand up. Him in space and the way he'd been with his lower body, change direction and burst, and have burst for a tall guy is very freaky. I'm telling you. I think he can be a really special guy. And he has a seven foot wingspan. He measures on and measures for a seven footer. The average wingspan of a seven footer. So, I mean, he's going to be a great rush guy, can stand up, can do whatever he wants to do. I think Tank's a very, very special player. One of the guys that's a great player in his class we don't talk about very much. And obviously with Carlos and Nick, you got a couple of big names. But just the mm -hmm. defensive backs in general, uh, what kind of class this is you're bringing up? Uh, uh, Tyler Hunter, sub 4 4, I mean, high 4 3 guy, great ball skills, very physical, great tackler, very good space player, can be an offense or a defensive player, loves defense. Marcus Brutus, who played 11 on 11, tremendous safety, MVP of the North South game, great ball instincts, understands ball, very physical. Keelan Smith, corner or safety. I'm going to play him at corner in the beginning. Keelan can run, he's 6'3, he can jam you, get up and press you, has great ball skills, but can go back and be a safety in a heartbeat. A lot of versatility, can be a nickel, can do a lot of things. And then you have Nick Wason, probably as good a cover corner as there is out there, tremendous ball skills, instincts, very competitive. And then uh, Carlos, who, like I said, is, is one of those special guys. I think there's a lot of versatility in there. Could be nickels, dimes, safeties, corners, and some rangy guys can take on big receivers. You haven't talked about Wilder, Jim. What do you think he's a better offensive or defensive player? I'm gonna tell you what. I think he's very underrated on offense. Everybody talks about defense because that's what I say. Defense is easy to see. It's about running around and doing things. You go watch that guy run the ball and pound that football up in there. What many guys in that Army game one tackling was? And I keep looking. You know those guys, I just keep looking and that in those last eight games in the NFL, I can't find one of them hiring 80-pound tailbacks. How come ain't none of them playing? I can't find one. Now, y'all love them. They fall off trees like acorns. And y'all get kind of out there and they run around and they're fast and they're quick and all that. But then eventually, them other, they get hit. Them guys are weigh about 230 and run up in there. You, you tackle them once or twice. That ain't very fun three, four, and five times. And he's very under, and he's wiggle in space. His ability to run and make bigger plays and make you miss in space is very underestimated. And he has great hands. Will be a tremendous blocker. Will pound on you. Can play split backs or eye. And you can flex him out and catch the football. Has great ball skills. I, I think he's going to be very special. And I to say that, Devontae Freeman, I'm high on him. I think Devontae, we, we've talked about that, how he's come on. And Eric Beverly didn't get to play, but we know he's a 5'8, he's a 215 pound guy as a tailback. That uh, I think is very strong and powerful. I think will be good when he gets healthy. Jimbo, clearly the SEC is the top conference in the country, but over the course of the last two years, you've taken away some name players that the SEC schools have wanted. Does that mean that the ACC is coming up? That this school is starting to rebound? I hope What's... none of the ACC gets them, but us. <laughs> 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 I'd rather have them with me. But uh, no, I mean Florida State's always been able to do that, though. I mean, you could, all right, go back in the heyday. All right, all them sugar, all them AC, a, SEC champion. Who used to beat them? Florida State. Florida State's lined up and playing week in, week out. I ain't seen nobody in the S, SEC go to uh, five, uh, what, four national championships in five years and play in those games. Florida State can line up and get players and do anything with anybody if we recruit right and do right. And if we'll, you know, keep building this thing and take and stretch it and get our facilities out there, build the indoor, build the dorm. Right now is the time to make that stretch.